Spencer here, logging on with my annual update of my My MS Story video. I have been dropping a video about having multiple sclerosis right here on this channel and on my other main YouTube channel, which is Meta Spencer. I've been dropping a video every single year, once a year. Originally with my first video, I didn't really know it was gonna be an annual update kind of thing. I was just kind of freaking out. Recently diagnosed with MS. I had had MS symptoms for a long time, almost two decades, 15, 16, 17 years, something like that. Finally got diagnosed after being misdiagnosed and told I didn't have MS and all that stuff. Anyway, I was freaking out when I first was diagnosed and I put up a video here and that video and the response I got to it was like so meaningful and helpful to me and empowering. And other people's My MS Story videos were just so important to me that I have just continued to annually post an update just so people know what's going on and for myself to kind of have a little bit of personal accountability where I have to at least once a year just sit down and assess the bigger picture of the disease and what's going on in my life and all that kind of stuff. So some basic facts. I was diagnosed with MS, like I said, it was like seven or eight years ago, but I first had symptoms when I was about 27 or 28 years old, something like that. I had some numbness, like my feet went numb for a while. And I had some other recurring numbness for years around my body. Nothing debilitating, but just kind of funky numbness. Uh, so I was in my late 20s and uh, it progressively got worse. Uh, uh, like it happens to a bunch of people, transitioned into eye issues, uh, double vision, uh, optic neuritis, all that kind of stuff. And you know, just got worse and worse, all kinds of body pains and issues. Uh, right now I am 52 years old and check this out, I'm pretty happy to say this. I think I said this last year and the year before and the year before, but I'm just gonna say it again because it's just the best. I have not had any new symptoms in the last year. I haven't had any symptoms in a long time, in any of the past years, since I switched over to uh, eating an anti-inflammatory diet, like religiously, never do I vary from the diet, uh, since I switched over to that and taking vitamin D. Also, a few years back, I made some shifts in my life, trying to de-stress and like detoxify my life, that kind of stuff. A little more relaxation, a lot more physical activity, doing the things I want to do outside every day for a living. So I quit a desk job, office job, teaching job that I had and moved on to more like manual labor type stuff. And things have been going pretty good for me. I mean, watching other My MS Story videos, and I do that all the time, I feel a little bit guilty or bad or something like that saying things are going well for me just because a lot of people are freaking struggling, like suffering with this disease, but that's just not my story. So I'm gonna tell my story, and uh, it is that I did have 10, 12, something like that, pretty bad years of my MS progressing pretty rapidly. And when I was diagnosed, I was having three or four or five different exacerbations each year, like all kinds of uh, stuff. I didn't lose mobility, but I was, kind of like debil debilitated by the pain, skin pain, tingling, blindness, double vision, visual cloudiness, sensory confusion, all that stuff. Uh, I will never forget what it felt like to be sitting down at the breakfast table and just be convinced, absolutely convinced that ice water was pouring down my leg or that it was on fire, sometimes at the same time ice water and fire together at last on one leg. So anyway, uh, uh, things were pretty rocky for me. I switched over to an anti-inflammatory diet and the vitamin D and dude, it's like night and day for me at least. Uh, stuff just got way better. No more exacerbations now for years, seven, eight years. And I feel like I was able to sort of take that dark cloud of multiple sclerosis and just kind of like let it sort of dissipate. At this point, sometimes I actually wonder, I was gonna say I think, but I kind of wonder if I'm kind of over the disease, just because it's not a huge part of my life. Like I do have 
uh, residual damage to my central nervous system that affects me. And I've talked about that in previous videos. You know, I've got some issues. There was just so much damage back in the day that I've got some visual issues, I've got some sensory stuff, I've got some, some things I just don't do super well. But I just, you know, it's like small stuff. I, or maybe it's big stuff, but I got used to it. It just doesn't seem like it's a huge part of my life. And since I haven't been having new exacerbations and new disabilities and all that stuff, you know, I just, I just don't really think about it as much as I used to. Like it, it was really like an oppressive presence in my life. And now it's just a little bit lighter or something like that. Like, like it's still there, but it's just not as bad. All right, so I'll probably put some footage in here at this point in the video, just kind of showing you what I mean when I say that I'm living like an active life. So uh, what I mean by that is that I'm outside working all the time. Uh, I run a tree service, so I do uh, tree removals, pruning, stuff like that. It's work that I absolutely love. It is physical, it's interesting. I really enjoy running my own business. So anyway, that's kind of like a big core of my life. I'm out there doing that stuff all the time. But I also really work to balance that between projects that I do uh, here at our farm and for friends and family and stuff like that. So I've been working on a new building project that I've been doing. I've been doing a bunch of uh, farm work with Melissa. We've been sort of putting in a, a, some orchards and some trees as part of like this tree farm idea we have. So you know, it's just kind of like an active physical life. I feel like people with multiple sclerosis get inundated with these images of debilitated people. And I know that that is the reality for many people. But we're not all in wheelchairs, we're not all using walkers or canes or anything like that. There are many of us just leading active lives, biking and running and doing that kind of stuff. I don't do so much of that like athletic kind of stuff, like biking and running as I used to, but I'm really more focused on work, like hard physical work. It's just, it's just kind of my jam and that's what I do. So somebody dropped a comment here on the channel uh, just recently, a couple days ago. Uh, saying that I was playing Russian roulette by not taking a medication, not taking one of these so-called disease-modifying therapies. I don't like that term, disease-modifying therapy, because the reading I've done and the stories I've heard from people who've taken an array of the MS drugs that are out there do not always describe them as disease-modifying. In fact, sometimes the disease just progresses anyway despite the medication. Anyway, this person was saying I'm playing Russian roulette, like really risking it by not being on the drugs or taking one of the drugs. And I tend to sort of see it the other way around. Uh, there are some powerful, I believe, uh, disease-modifying diets out there, these anti-inflammatory diets curated for people with multiple sclerosis. Here I'm talking about the Walls Protocol, the Overcoming MS Diet by George Jelinek and uh, the best bet diet. Those are like three diets that, are, that have some differences, but basically coalesce around the idea of eating more whole foods and trying to avoid some inf uh, potentially inflammatory foods, though it's not totally agreed upon as to which foods are necessarily inflammatory. And then also uh, to eating some anti-inflammatory stuff, you know, some foods that might keep the inflammation down in your system. Well, that's what I do. I follow a diet that is kind of a blend of that best bet diet, that overcoming MS diet, and the Walls Protocol. I follow a diet that kind of works for me that blends those three, and uh, it, it seems to work for me. I'm not gonna say it's 100% proven or anything, because though my MS has totally chilled out and is not freaking out like it was seven or eight years ago, I also take vitamin D, that could be a big factor, and I've also kind of de-stressed and just mellowed my life out and increased my rest overall my sleeping, my regularity, and stuff like that. But I am pretty much uh, totally sold on these diets. I feel like the food is a big part of the picture when you think about multiple sclerosis. And a big part of staying healthy for me has been uh, following that diet. All right, last thing I was gonna talk about was just uh, my relationship with doctors and medicine and all that kind of stuff. Previously, I was very connected to a neurologist in Chicago. Uh, uh, if you have watched all my videos, you know originally I was diagnosed down in St. Louis. I had to go to like this center. Finally, I found someone. She was like, dude, you have MS. Uh, she bailed and went to some other university uh, uh, hospital, whatever. I ended up in Chicago and I had an MS 
a specializing neurologist. Uh, kind of an okay guy. He was very reluctant to treat me and deal with me because I wasn't taking the drugs he was recommending. But after a few years, as he kept reading my scans, my brain scans and my spine scans and seeing that I was doing really well and you know, like checking me out, doing the eval on me and be like, dude, you're really healthy. Uh, after a few years, he became convinced I was doing a good, good thing for myself and it was all cool. Anyway, re we're not in that area anymore geographically. We're out east right now in New York and I have uh, tried to find an MS doctor. It has not worked out. I've seen a neurologist. She really was not like an MS person. She was nice and everything, but she just really was not a specialist in the disease and it just seemed kind of worthless to see her. So I have not been getting scans lately. I'm not on that see the neurologist every year, get a scan every year protocol. Um, it's just sort of a change I made in the last couple years and I'm pretty comfortable with it. It's not that I'm never going to see a doctor again. It's, it's just that I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of value that I was getting year after year of seeing a neurologist and hearing the same thing and seeing a neurologist and hearing the same thing. For those first few years to see that my scans hadn't changed, all lesions I had were lesions I had and I wasn't like getting new lesions I didn't know about or something like that. That was reassuring. But at this point, I'm just not as super invested in seeing a neurologist every year. That might be a little weird and a little bit risky, but I'm just not so worried about it. I feel like things have really stabilized for me. And at my age and my position with the disease moving forward, I'm pretty comfortable with that. All right, so you've heard my story. You've seen some footage of the stuff I've been doing. Uh, hit me with a comment down below if you are so inclined and you wanna chat. I'm also always totally open to talking to people on uh, uh, email, Instagram, chat, whatever that thing is, the Instagram messenger, Facebook messenger, phone calls, whatever. I hear from people all the time, actually kind of all over the world. I was recently talking to a guy in Turkey. I hear from people all the time who have MS, stumble into these videos and just kind of want to talk. Maybe they have questions or you know, just want to share their story, whatever. And I really, really value that. I feel like it can be very isolating having a disease that, I'm not gonna say MS is rare because it's not like, you know, one, one in a million or anything like that, but it can just be sort of isolating uh, having a disease and if you're not in a support group or something like that, you know, not having other people to talk to who experience similar stuff or kind of understand what's going on with you. So uh, those connections are really valuable. Hit me up in the comments down below if you wanna chat. Otherwise, one year from now, I'm gonna sit down or stand somewhere or whatever and drop another video, my ninth video in my MS story odyssey, just because I really value this idea of updating each year, keeping the story alive. All right, stay healthy out there.